passed up my uh, yogurt for a banana. I haven't eaten my banana yet, though. <laughs> I haven't eaten, eaten, eaten. Yeah, you know what I meant, right? Yep. Doesn't that irritate you? You know, like Sheldon's Cooper? Yes, and that's how you say that, you know? It's like, did you understand what I said? All right. Okay, just because certain people say this is the proper uh, sequence of communication doesn't mean that when you understood what was said that it wasn't said properly. The only thing that's proper about communication is the understanding, right? So if I say we's be off and to go, you understand that you know we're all we're all going somewhere away from this place that we're at now, right? So, so you're saying that improperly, not if you're saying it in a Swahili translation, uh, certain kinds of Swahili translation of certain tribal dialects from Africa, brought to the United States, and given a language in which they're forced to function in by people that tell them what to do, right? Do you understand? Okay. So it's very important not to let your pretentiousness and your arrogance define you as what you perceive as a, as a more intelligent person than the other person. So it's entirely tangible that the person like Sheldon Cooper saying, yes, that's how you say that. And you say, man, well, I'd be off and to go and I will be staying up around here listening to your shit no more. And he knows exactly what I say. And I said it because I'm more intelligent than him and I'm tired of his condescending attitude and his pretentiousness, pretentiousness and his arrogance, right? So you guys do understand this, right? How important, okay? I can't tell you how many times me and Hila Selassie have had this talk in prayer, you know, about respect and understanding through communication and truly listening, right? That when you truly listen to people, okay, that you will understand them better. That you can't take a book, write it down, and say, that's Hela Selassie. Okay? You talk in prayer to Hela Selassie, he knows who you are, he's going to talk to you. If he doesn't know who you are because you're using him as a comic book character, continue fighting over money, you can sit down and go, I want to talk to Hela Selassie. I need more money for fucking and food. He ain't going to talk to you. It doesn't matter who you are. Okay, do you understand? So, Hele Selassie talks to me because I don't need more money for fucking and fighting. But he ain't talking to you because you, hey, hey, hey teach me how you, yeah, that's why Jesus always told me, that's all they talk about, or else, and he ignores most of them. And there's a lot of people, and me and my dad have had that conversation numerous times, and then finally yesterday I got across to him, I said, you know, he did not know who a lot of televangelist preachers were, until I said, do you know who that is, Jesus? He says he's been talking to you, I don't know him. And dad says, you know, he's God, he's omniscient. Oh, Jesus says in the Bible, if you do things in my name and you are false, I will not know you. Okay. I, I'm just going by what was written down, you know what I mean? And so, but people, so you, and scientists always, you only seem to use the books when they seem to benefit you. And you don't, no, here's, let me give you what I do. Okay, here's this. Me and dad were talking about it today. Because his dad was an alcoholic that made his family's life miserable through his partying and his alcoholism. It's just that way naturally before he was born. It was, you know, it was before he even got in the war. He was an alcoholic and a drunk. I said, yeah, no, Granny told me the stories that she'd come walking home in the middle of the worst part of El Paso and she would see the car coming because she thought they were late to pick him up. And it was my, my grandpa, his uh, sister and her husband watching on the porch and then seeing as soon as she was coming over the hill they would see her and they would all leave the kids and go run to the bar drive right past her and my she was a little woman through the worst areas of el paso the poorest people in the most violent areas and criminal ridden areas of el paso my grandpa and his sister his her husband used to do that to my grandmother okay that's i know granny used to tell me all the stories Hor horrible stories okay Absolute horrible stories like my Aunt Frances telling me when she almost shot my Uncle Bob because he kept cheating on her and she caught him. And she was, I was going to shoot him with a pistol, little Earl. I almost shot you, I almost killed your uncle twice because he wouldn't stop cheating on me. And I was like, wow, that's horrible. That's horrible. Yeah. Um, with my wife, no. Okay. What was hard for me, you know, she could go have sex with anybody she wanted just as long as she left and left me and the kids alone. But she never did that. She always used the system and the kids because she could 
to keep us as a home base in case the new guy she was fucking turned out to be a cheating liar, which happened quite a bit, right? And last time I talked to my son Noah, he told me every time I see your face in the mirror, I hate myself. And if I was you to stay with mom, I would have killed you. And I'm like, you think that now because your mom didn't stay with me, okay? But if your mom had stayed with me, she wouldn't have been fucking those assholes at the bar anymore. And you would look at your dad every day and say, I want to be a lot like him. Because he forgives people for being selfish and doesn't bring it up every day and say, remember when you used to go fuck everybody in town and use all your money to drink at the bar and fuck at the hotel? You can't do that. Because you got to build a family off of the person that they are today, not the fucker they were yesterday, right? Okay. Someone here is like, so one of these kids is like Jeremiah, Job, and Jonah in the Bible. Some of these kids are not the same. Can you guess which kid is like Jeremiah, Elijah, and Ezekiel in the Bible? Tell me before my song is done. My song's almost done. We, we got about only about one or two more minutes left. Um, I'm going to sell you a CarMax commercial or something. I don't know. It was a retarded commercial about this little cute little brown girl in a green shirt with black pants. You have 15 minutes to do this, and then you do that, and then you get a bit of there. There you go. And he said something important. Uh, did you ever, you ever watch old commercials? You ever notice how stupid they were? Like Lucky Strike cigarettes are healthy for you, according to a, st a study at Stanford University, right? You know what I mean? And shit like that. And you look, like, oh, they were dumb. It's like, yeah, they were. Okay. What about today? You live in Lord's Prayer today? Okay, let's stop going back and looking at the videotape. Play the videotape. There you are saying Lucky Strike cigarettes were healthy. Hey, is that Marilyn Monroe? And that's Jack Benny. Your money or your life? I'm thinking, I'm thinking, right? Look, okay. <laughs> you're funny. Did you understand what me and Haley Selassie were saying? Okay. Well, then you better be aware that the word is living and not a comic book that you turned the Lord into. Okay, so if you're looking for the truth of the Gospels and the restoration of the truth to the Gospels, don't put up pictures of Jesus Christ on the Trinity Network or um, uh, Hellas Lassie on the Tonight Show. Come on to YouTube and come to Earl. Come to me. Don't ask my neighbor. Don't you? Come to me. Okay, YT? I mean YG? YG, Marley? Don't ask my neighbors. Come to me. Okay. If your mom's too proud to come to me, if you come, you can teach your mom how to believe in the living word and not be a comic book salesman who needs more money to fight with Shane Hannity when she acting just like Shane Hannity. I'm just thinking of your family, yo. I'm good at this, man. You show up, show up to the table, you better have good manners or else you'd be off to go. All right, I love you.